Okay, this video is the second part of the stock investing video. I'm going to go over a little bit more detail on how to find stocks that are undervalued, what to look for, when to buy, basically what to buy. So this is kind of like the second portion of the first video, just to give you a, a summary, an idea of like what's out there. First of all, you want to uh, get your business in order, the margins, your clientele and all these things, get the money coming in first. When you have extra cash and have savings or you're an employee and you got extra money in the bank, then you would get into the stocks. But you probably do that third. You'd probably get your business in order and then, then I'd get you into larger real estate and things like that when you have funding. Okay, so now to start this video, basically what to buy you're gonna look at well what to buy and how to buy and what you're gonna find it what you want to want to look for um, what's called technicals are all the numbers it's what day traders look at it's the charts the price to earnings ratio the dividends the volume and the market capitalization technicals are just how the stock trends how how it's gone up in the um, charts like the three month the one day, the six month, the one year, the five year, or the ten year, and you're gonna look at that, and you're gonna want to make sure the chart is congruently giving a profit and no losses. I mean, later on you might get better at what you're looking at and pick one that has a loss on any one of those charts, but um, that's what you're gonna look at the charts. So, just for example. Like I kind of mentioned it previously, um, just like this is an IPO, I would suggest not getting into IPOs till you know what you're doing. But um, you would go back to one one day, one week, and of course this doesn't really have a month, but three months, one year, that kind of thing. That's your charts. As far as price earnings ratio, um, this is a new IPO, so it doesn't have one. So let's pick one that does. We'll go with uh, another company here. Price earnings ratio, like for example, Amazon would be a pretty high one because they're so strong. Let me get it right here. Price earnings ratio, 81%. That's one of the higher ones. It can go down from zero up to 80 or even higher. Uh, depends on how strong the company is. 80 is like incredible. That means how much money you're going to make per stock. $81.91 is what you'll make on each stock. These are the technicals that you're going to be looking at. Um, dividends, volume, and market cap. Okay, volume is for the day. You want to have a stock trading at like a million, a, a million million um, transactions a day this 1.7 anything less you might get stuck in it and be kind of hard to get out of but like if you're dealing with large cap stocks which means like fortune 500 companies and companies that make over like uh, 50 million a year or more higher large cap versus the small companies like your penny stocks or your blue chip stocks you're going to be having you know large volume that's what you want to look for for stability um, so you got the price earnings ratio that tells you it's pretty strong. Uh, if you just went around and looked through the high price earnings ratio, you, you could be s making some good choices at least for buying stable long-term term stocks. But it's all relative to the price that you pay for, the price of the stock you buy, which I'm going to get into later about how you figure out what is the best value, what the value really should be. Because the stock market is based off of the numbers and the way people interpret it um, and who buys it and who doesn't so it which I'll get into a little bit about uh, the psychology behind that okay so the market capitalization that is how many shares are out so there's 935 billion shares of this stock that are out so like on a it's been around since 1994 so they've been producing a lot of a lot of stocks so that gives you what the market capitalization is 
the only thing missing on any of your basic platforms is going to be the fundamentals which is your income balance sheet profit and loss and the numbers where it's going to tell you like what's the margins of profit they're making on you know their income is it high like a normal one would be like anything above 40 50 60 70 percent margins is a stronger company you want to have a company that has the best margin so if you're looking at Amazon you might say well you're gonna to go to uh, another site since it's all public and you're gonna look at the technicals I'm sorry the fundamentals and you're gonna to wanna to look at what is what is their balance sheet look like how much money do they have in the bank this kind of things so that is called the fundamentals income statement how much they made last year total gross and you're going to go off gross profit operating expenses and their margins your net income you want to find out what the net income is in order to find out what the value of the whole company is you're going to take the net income for see this is 2018 to find out how much you want to buy the whole company for you'd say well it's worth 12 billion dollars right now so five years from now you're looking at like 60 billion dollars so that's when you'd want to buy it that's the price of disney 60 billion dollars basically now when you get to so you're going to look at that you're going to compare it and then you're going to find out uh, like I mentioned earlier, like the insider trades, how many people are buying and selling your stock. Like the insiders. The insiders are the owners. And the investors that initially got into it before it became public. And they have to report to the SEC so everybody knows what's going on. So when you want to do that, you want to look up what, what the insider buying is. On this site, it's called... Um, well, it's an insidermonitor.com, but it, it tells you like the top insider trading, trade, trading sales and buys for the week or the day. So you could go through here and say, oh, well, something's going to happen. Like if you wanted to see Avico Pharmaceuticals, you know, a lot of stuff's action. This is where you would have picked up on um, the buyout of Anadarko and the buyout of 21st Century by Disney and you probably would have picked up on possibly like the Chipotle jump last week where it went from 200 to 500 bucks in a day these type of things but if you're interested in one particular stock you input it up here put that symbol in and it's going to tell you what's going on so that that you know of you're going to check that out then you're going to find out who whatever company has the most competitive edge which is basically monopoly like your apple microsoft qualcomm um sort of walmart amazon like amazon and then the ones that are you know the top top innovators that constantly innovate and come up with new google alphabet in a way they kind of drop in this last quarter but um, ones that have their own ability to co constantly come up Facebook come up with new ways to generate income and completely stay on top of the the competition basically a monopoly those type of companies are what you want to invest in so that tells you basically the generalities of what you're looking for it's kind of simple and easy um, it's not rocket science I mean it's just basically doing your numbers and trying to add up things in your mind to create a story a reason why this stock is going to make money and you're going to find out the reason why based off of uh,
something that they've mentioned. They have uh, earnings that come out four times a year, and they have calls for each of those earning calls. And each of those calls are going to say, well, next quarter we're going to do this and this and this. So you got to have something that sparks or creates a reason why they're going to go up in price. So if the earnings are higher than what they projected, then the stock goes up. If they say they're lower, then the stock goes down. But if they say, hey, we're going to buy XYZ company and consolidate this industry um, next quarter, the stock's going to go up. You So you might pay attention to that. Um, so those are key things. A contrarian view is making your own decisions and deciding what stock is good and what stock is bad per your own knowledge not going off of the news or the analysts or all these people and doing your own research that is what makes you get successful because the second part of investing is really determining about what the heck other people are going to do so like on a perspective, uh, you might say, well, if you're watching CNBC all the time and some days, like three, on average, like three out of four days, stocks are going up and then maybe one day they go down for a day or two. But even like when they get a CEO of a company on CNBC and they start talking about the company, the stock's going up. And then if some of the analysts on CNBC or whatever media there is there's like a combined census that they're going to talk shit on a stock it's going to drop but if you already have in mind what you're going to pay for the stock and what it's worth then you already know for the long term you're going to leave it and not worry about it but you can play the market depending upon how you know it's being talked about of course like an example in the boeing crash you know the stock dropped and it's going to go back up so you'd want to buy it when it dropped that's the crowd mentality and how the market reacts to it so the market is like a person with uh, bipolar hyperactivity <laughs> oversensitive so like the earnings come out four times a year you're going to see the calendar you see when your your stock is up and normally what you want to do is even if it comes out good sometimes the market trips and it drops, but uh, you can put a stop loss on it and then take advantage of it, The only the upside. Just like this and everything else in life, you want to take some risk, so you're going to spread your money out onto what you think is good, and you're going to watch it, and you're going to cut your losses fast. So you could lose a little bit of money, but if you cut it fast, you throw it in the fast movers that are going up, well, boom, you're making money over the losses. You don't even think about the losses, and you can make tons of money. But I'm just telling you this in a long-term effort as a long-term play to put your money in a savings place that will actually make money, 20%, maybe more. Depends on how you play your cards versus the bank. So the best time to buy is when everybody else is in fear or when the market crashes or there's a recession. So if you just did this, played with like a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, and you wanted to uh, put that money in and save your money until you know something really goes bad, like a Boeing crash or like a company gets completely sued over whatever or something, and then catch it at the right time. So the next thing is uh, like relationship relationships between um, outer circumstances in the stock market stock market five year ten year etc treasury bonds if they go down the stocks are going to go up if inflation goes up stocks go down if the federal raises rates the stocks go down I'm just giving you an overview on how to get into investing and like what to look for and things like that now here's basically a simple recap you're going to check at the if you're going to get into stocks you would look at the charts see see everything comes out on the charts is like positive profit for like at least five to ten years you're going to check at the fundamental fundamental fundamentals and most importantly you want to look at like on any website you're going to find out what their net income was for the last year you want to make sure that it has good margins 
and then you're going to look on the balance sheet. The balance sheet's going to tell you how much debt they have. If they have low debt and high cash, you're good to go. I mean, they can't have debt as long as it's using for expansion and bringing in money. But if it's old debt that they can't pay off, then it's something you don't really want to get your hands on. This goes for like buying a business. I mean, the fundamentals or the um, taxes and the margins and how much money they coming in and how much money they spend on expanding their business, how much money they spend on research and development of new products and innovating to get to the next level to bring in the new customers and keep that business on top making the money. That is the fundamentals. That is a key thing and that's what you're going to look for on other websites that state all of the SEC information for the stock. So it's just like buying a business, but you look at that, that and then you see who's good and who's bad. The higher margins, the better. Like Amazon's margins are like pretty good. I mean, they're they're a little low because he's expanding other things, but the higher the margins, the better. That's how you compare what one stock to another when you look at the margins of who's getting the most profit, who has the most income, and the most cash in the bank. I mean, like Microsoft has tons of cash in the bank, whereas Amazon doesn't have as much cash in the bank. But Amazon is growing faster and undervalued, where Microsoft is overvalued, growing slower. But it has a, had a long term, longer term trajectory. So, I mean, they're both good, but Amazon is a better buy. So, you do want to spread your money out similar to like a hedge fund, which means you're going to cover your, your losses and cover the sectors and be in different sectors, like from uh, it can be retail to semiconductors to other technology sectors to healthcare, which is not so hot right now and other areas like uh, transport logistics and things like that and diversify a little bit but stick to your key companies now the next point of the video which is really important is finding the undervalued stocks this is what uh, you're not gonna see on the internet and I don't think anybody's even really come up with the calculation I just reverse engineered it from what I assumed Warren Buffett was doing because I know that's what he does and I know how he picks his stocks but he never tells you how and it's not in any books so I just ran the numbers backwards until I started figuring out and then did the research and find out what he actually paid for it when he bought it and I'm like right on the money and that's what I've been doing with my stocks for a while now and I have a lot of money in stocks until I put it on projects or things that are more of a wealth creation vehicle but it's definitely right there where it's at so in order to find the value of a company is you want to find out the full price of the whole company which is you're going to take any company that net income price from now multiply it by five years and that's going to give you the total value of the company now if you want to find out how much that value is to get what the main value of the fair value of each piece of stock is worth today you want to find out how many how many stocks are out divided by the current stock price so the market cap is how many millions or billions of stock shares are out divided by the stock price that's going to give you the number of outstanding shares so to make it really simple, you just divide that, the entire price of the company, divided by the shares out, and that is going to give you the price per stock, and that is exactly what Warren Buffett does. It's exactly how he does it. And I've tested the theory. I'm actually a little, well, I'm about right on the money, because um, when he's bought his stocks, I've even done the research at the price he's paid for them, but that's what you do. So then you find out ones are undervalued, and you're only going to buy those undervalued, and you might pick maybe, like he says, maybe 20 good ones in your lifetime, and then just go in them heavy. So let's go over some examples to see that we're on the, on the money. Apple. Okay. So Apple 
you're going to have to look up the, the market cap is going to be given to you right off of any platform. It's going to tell you the, so there's 940 billion shares out as of this. I did this on April 14th just for the experiment. The price was $198. Their net profit is 84 million, 84 billion a year. So basically, you're going to take the market cap divided by the stock prices. It's going to give you the number of shares outstanding. Okay. So once you do that, um, the price of the company to buy it now, you're talking like 84 billion times five years, puts it at 421 billion. So now to find out the price of each stock is going to be 421 billion divided by the shares outstanding is going to give you $89.19 per share. And that stock is overvalued by a hundred bucks now you go back and you run the numbers and i look up in the history what did buffett pay for the stock when he bought it he bought it for like the low hundreds and around 116 dollars because it bought it over like two or three quarters and that is exactly the same number that he came up with and the same reason why he got into these stocks and he sits in them and bees in them for so long so they can go up and down it doesn't matter because he bought it at like 110 bucks, 116 dollars, and it's right now at 200 dollars. So he does that with all of his stocks, and he just throws in all the money, and that's how he knows what's a good good buy. Just like he just put in, just from a phone call from Occidental, well, by way of Brian Moynihan, Mon for like 10 billion dollars, as long as they close the Anadarko deal. He's going to give him $10 billion, and he decided that within, like, one hour. He never even seen the the Texas oil flats or anything like that or anything but the numbers on the paper. He saw it, ran the numbers, it's a good deal, and boom, it's simple, done. That's just how you do That's the same as finding stocks. Now we'll go over Bank America. The net income last year was $26 billion. The market cap is 291 Current stock price is 30 bucks. This is, like as of April about a month ago so you do the same equation come up with the actual fair value their price of stock is $13 right now it's at 30 bucks so it's definitely overpriced um, Buffett bought this thing at seven bucks a share because he sets on his money until there's a critical critical problem with whatever company then he realizes calculates value sees if the value is right sees if it's a competitive company and all the other things fall into place and then boom he buys it at seven bucks when the whole industry of everybody like the normal people would be like they're not touching it it's picking the right price for the right stock so He's still in the game at seven bucks. He's got money in that. Uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals is another one. He bought this thing for like fourteen dollars, but right now it's completely dropped. But he's on it for the big picture, like the 10, 20 year lifetime holding. Only sometimes he sells the socks. But look at the equation here. Uh, I came up with it right now. It's almost where it should be at eleven dollars and right now it's uh like today it's like 14 15 bucks i mean it's the largest generic drug manufacturer there is but they're going through a little bit of problems but in time i mean it's this one i wouldn't recommend for a normal person to buy because you're gonna have to sit on it for a while like five or i don't know it's at least five years probably on that one but it's a good one microsoft uh is overvalued by 24 bucks um I don't even think uh, Buffett is even in that one because he doesn't really stick to, he doesn't go out of his core area of knowledge. Aurora Cannabis, uh, their net income last year was uh, below zero, so uh, we're going to forget that one. Shopify is a hot one, but they're kind of an IPO. They're only like three to four years old. They're not super old, but they're making like, uh, you know, 100% return on your money. So here's the numbers on that one. I come up with it being overvalued by twenty dollars, but because it it 
moves so fast. I mean, it's making a lot of money. And all the pot stocks are going through it. Facebook's going through it. And Amazon use it to sell certain items. It's pretty hot. It has a lot of competitors, but it makes good money. So if you keep an eye on it, it's really good to put your money. Disney again, which we kind of went over. Amazon, uh, it's undervalued by 400 bucks, or at least as it was about a month ago. It's still pretty hot. The margins are only 40%, but still, it's a good one. Anyways, that's a little overview on how to pick your stocks, when to pick them, and what to look for, and what to be thinking about. So, just treating treating your money as a savings account, and you put in uh, some right good stocks, that's really a good way to do it. If you want to get, uh, here's some other hot stocks, I mean... Trade Desk is really hot. I didn't go over that, but uh, as far as as far as far um, profit and return on your money is pretty good. It's a little volatile, but that, like Shopify, is hot. You just have to keep an eye on it. Wix is good. Oli's is good. Match isn't so good. Zynga, uh, which is coming out with all the games for y your phones, is pretty good. Anyways, I'm not subscribing for you to pick any stock or telling you or giving you advice, legal advice, or am a stockbroker or licensed trader or anything. I'm just telling you how to trade stocks, how to create a savings account for your money, and to help build your wealth and get your savings to where it will make more than inflation overcomes and allows you to have wealth creation on your extra savings but you can't get to your extra savings till you get your business straight up expand your business and buy things that make money so this is per the second phase of the puzzle puzzle or the third phase of the puzzle on the side note but at least you get it in your mind and you have it to be paying attention to these things and to create more money with your brain and thinking about this so that's pretty much it for this video. Also, if you need funding or whatever, give us a call at Credit Repair. Uh, number is 312-473-4163.